curious with your defense and, and maybe player personnel, ideally for you, um, how many would you like to play? In to I don't know if it's in total or is it by position? How do you essentially what, what can be an effective defense with how many guys get to play on, in a game? Uh, in secondary, usually at corner, you're looking at probably three corners. You know, uh, you're going to have your two guys you feel probably the most good with. But after that, it's usually an extra guy. You're lucky if you got four corners. Um, at the safety position, not a lot of substitution, but you also need one guy there as well just to kind of relieve some guys, you know, especially if you're going to take some of those starters off of special teams. So you're looking at probably six to seven guys you probably feel good about playing. Maybe eight would be the max amount number. Uh, and then line, if you could do the other position. Defensive line, you're going to platoon a lot. You know, you're probably going to be, you want to be too deep at each spot uh, with a, probably a fifth guy at the defensive end and a fifth guy at the defensive tackles. But your top guys are going to get the most reps. And so we kind of categorize how many snaps can a guy play and how much do we need him to play. So it just, it just depends on how good they get. But you, you want to play numbers at D-line. Because in the fourth quarter, you need some fresh guys up front. At backers, kind of like safety, you don't want they're the brain trust kind of the the defense along with the safety. So you don't want to mix and mingle too many guys up in there. But you're looking at probably feel good if you could go four, but a lot of times it's just three backers. Five would probably be pushing it. Just with all that, you got a lot of guys um, that obviously want to play. Uh, what do you anticipate fall looking like in terms of competition to try to they want to be in those? Those numbers, obviously, they're earning roles. Well, I, mean, I think adjusting the depth chart as much as you can. If a guy has a good day, let him play with the ones and let him communicate. And Guys need to play with other guys. Uh, you don't want to always have guys stuck playing on the side of another guy the whole time and all of a sudden you have an injury or have a substitution and they're not used to each other. So just manipulating the depth chart and getting different guys in there at practice I think helps for injuries or in you know substitutions in the game. And so many guys either were out from spring and you add in a bunch of guys. Do you feel like you either have a good sense on personal or do you think it's going to be still learning a lot throughout fall camp for you? Uh, no, I, I got a pretty good feel. You know, most of the, the key guys were out up front. Uh, so I've watched them on video. You know, I know what they can do. So the backup guys that were played through this spring, it was good to see what they did. And we, I thought we developed quality depth. And uh, But it's open competition. You know, every day you want a guy to feel like he has a chance to be a starter. And nobody should feel so comfortable that they can't, another guy can't start over them. So competition is the best thing. And uh, I'm anxious to see guys compete against each other. I wanted to ask you about a couple of the new additions since, since the end of spring. Uh, Anthony Campbell, uh, he was you guys picked up. Uh, and obviously, they got a couple of corners. Uh, and Richard and uh, Davis. Davis, yeah. Just, can you speak to those guys and maybe how quickly you think they can get acclimated? Because transfers, obviously, yeah. they're ready to go, right? <laughs> yeah, Campbell, it's hard to tell other than the video, watching what he did at in Monroe and uh, off a high school film because during the summer there's nothing full speed you know at the defensive lineman but in the secondary Richard being a long kid uh, can play multiple spots and in Davis I was really impressed with uh, playing corner playing nickel uh, just his intelligence level uh, you can tell he's played a lot of football uh, he's disguising things when you haven't even asked him to disguise things yet so that was really good to see so I'm excited about the new additions. And then Cloyd, I know it's that weak side was telling Yeah, uh, good looking kid. I'm anxious to see him hit. You know, he's going to do that in the summer as well, but he looks right. He looks the part. And uh, I'm excited to get him in there, you know, with Kiko and the rest of the linebackers. So it's going to be some good competition at linebacker as well. Is Campbell starting out outside or inside? He'll start out inside. Uh, we'll, we'll be a little bit in a 3 4 structure, so he'll play a little bit on the edge, but for the most part, he'll be an inside guy. Hey, Coach. I want to ask a little bit about the safeties. I'm Matt Chardell from <coughs> Kane Sport, and I'm trying okay. to introduce myself before you. But um, I was talking to Cam Kitchens, and he was saying how he blitzed maybe five times last year. I know you're an aggressive coaching style. Um, so, you know, with regard to the safeties, you're going to have them um, cover, blitz, run stuff, like everything, right? Corners, mm -hmm. the same thing also. Yes, sir. Can you sort of talk about your philosophy for those guys and how different it is from what they were doing last year and how that transition's going from what you saw in the spring and to what you hope to see in the fall? Uh, we'll be a little bit more aggressive with how much we blitz uh, and the different guys that are blitzing. Last year, uh, I've been there before to where you put in a new defense and guys don't have a handle for certain things and maybe you didn't do things well so you kind of stick to what you know and you try to get comfortable and let the kids get comfortable 
Um, but this defense, they picked it up pretty quick. Uh, we'll blitz corners, safeties, backers, drop guys in coverage, different guys. So just trying to be as multiple as you can, try to mix up things for the offensive line and the quarterbacks as much as you can. So everybody get their share of doing things, I promise you. And with James Williams in particular, uh, since he has such a unique skill set, some say he could even be a linebacker yeah. next level. Like, how do you use him? Do you put a you know two different you know, Cam and a different safety in there? Put him at linebacker sometimes. Do you you know help sort of put him in position to make plays depending on the situation and the type of offense, or is he just purely a safety? How do you sort of view his role? Uh, James will extend a little bit more than he has. Uh, uh, he'll play what we call our boundary safety for most of the time, but when they get big personnel, he'll go to some outside backer stuff. And, uh, we'll blitz him off the edge and do different things with him. I told him, you know, you want to put as much stuff on film as you can for an NFL scout so you don't get pigeonholed in one spot. Uh, so if you play multiple positions, uh, it's going to help you, and he's bought into that. And Well, we try to teach all the defensive backs at two spots. So if you're a corner, you got to learn to play nickel. If you're a nickel, you got to learn to play safety. Safeties try to play nickel as well, but James is a guy that can be an outside backer, so he'll, he'll focus on safety and outside backer through camp. Yeah, Cam was saying he thinks James has really embraced that like Swiss Army knife. And I, obviously you weren't here last year, but like, have you seen that, that he's just kind of bought into that idea of I can do whatever Yeah, when you, when, you, do? when you start talking about the NFL and you start talking money <laughs> and you start talking about creating value for yourself, you start looking at things a little bit differently, you know. Uh, it's not a wholesale change of him as an outside right. backer, but I definitely want to use him to his strengths, and it's going to help us better, but also putting that on film for the NFL scouts so that they can evaluate and not say, hey, this is a safety that might be able to play outside backer. It's a guy that we've seen play outside backer, but guy is so athletic, he can also play back on a hash. So I think creating that value for himself is going to help him on the next level. And speaking of Cam, I mean, how much did you know about him um, when you got here? I mean, as a player and as a person. I knew a little bit about him as a player because when he was coming out of high school, I was at FAU, so we were recruiting, of course, South Florida, and uh, we wouldn't, we knew we weren't going to get him. But I, <laughs> I mean, I knew of him and James, and uh, but I didn't know him as a person. I know he had a good year last year, but when I got here, found out just talking with him, what kind of person he is, kind of how he goes about his business. I've been really impressed. Um, I don't know what he's going to do in the future, but I think he'd be a great coach if he decided to do that. Usually some of your better players, uh, the guys that are kind of the brain trust of your defense or offense, a lot of them probably would be good coaches, and I could see that he would be one of those. But, yeah, uh, Cam's a really good player, uh, but he's also you know a very good leader and very smart. How valuable is he to – you guys have so many new corners. How valuable can he be to that group? Uh, I don't know. He's in a new defense too, so it's a yeah. little different. But. The corners that they don't have as much to learn. Yeah, you know, it's true. really they're on an island and they have their own battles every day. Um, so Cam can't help them too much other than make the calls. But yeah. like when, when it's one on one with a wide receiver, it don't matter if you're playing. The only thing can help them if you're playing cover two and you got safety over the top. Uh, so from whether it's quarters, cover three, or man to man, they're going to have to play one on one against a wide receiver outside. So. Uh, yeah, Cam will make a lot of the checks for the defense, uh, so he'll take that off their plate right. for sure. And you mentioned Cam as a leader. Just, I mean, like, is there anything that he, any moment that stands out to you in particular where it's like, okay, this is the kind of guy he is? Uh, you know, we've had some moments in two-minute drills and uh, different situations that we had this spring to where he made the play to stop the drive or to stop them from scoring. So he had some big moments this spring, and, um, I may see what he's going to do in the fall. Of course, he had a really good year last year. and uh, But we'll count on him a lot, making all the checks. And uh, I'm excited to see what kind of year he's going to have. And not an unimportant question, what's more brutal, Florida in July or Louisiana in July? Louisiana. <laughs> uh, Louisiana is muggy all the time. It's humid all the time. We don't get it ever a breeze. You know, there's never a breeze. So it's something about, like, from Houston to New Orleans, all alone at Gulf. We just, it's muggy all the time. There's never a cool moment. So when, this, when the bad weather comes in for us, the heat, whether it's morning or night, it feels the same. It's just, you get sunburned when the sun's out. When it's not out, you don't get sunburned, but it's the same heat. At so. least <laughs> you get a sea breeze here. Yes, sir. Thank hey, you. Coach, how much have you actually studied the opposing teams versus knowing your own team? Like, how do you balance your time? In the offseason, you've already sort of looked at game one, game two, game ten. You know, how do you sort of deal with that stuff in those offenses? Well, the first thing I did when I came in is I looked at our personnel just to see what we had. And then 
of course, I've got to do a self-scout on myself from last year at Marshall. So some of the things that people beat us on or things we needed to correct, I've got to also correct that here because people are going to attack me that way structurally. Uh, and then, of course, you do you break down all the games of all the opponents you're playing. And again, but that's last year's film. So they'll have new players, of course, and they'll probably do a little bit of different things depending if they have the same coordinator or not. So, uh, you know, there's nothing like the – the in season games to watch, but uh, yeah, you got to do a self study on yourself and them, and uh, so it's kind of a big juggling act right now. I mean, we've covered Prairie Shield and myself, and you to some extent also, as a little younger, have seen Miami defenses and offenses come in in the first couple of series year after year and put Miami in its heels on defense. Sure. And it seems like you, for the first time, is it, as a coordinator, somebody who's saying, you can do whatever you want. Like, I'm taking it to you, you better adjust to me. Like, is that a fair statement? No, no, I mean, you. So when you break down an opponent, you're breaking down of previous plays and things that they've run. But you also got to know, okay, they're not going to do those things we've been seeing. If they're going to look at film and say, okay, this is the way we're going to attack them, which may be a play that they ran and have something off that play. We don't know what that is. We're going in really blind. So, like, I go into the game and I'm really not really nervous because – Getting nervous isn't going to help the situation. So I kind of like wait, like, okay, what are they going to try to do to us? When you get in the game and you see it, you immediately got to start fixing the problems on the sideline. And the most important thing is you go back to your base defenses that you run because if you have a base defense, you can structurally change things and manipulate things with that, okay? But I have to get that fixed before half. Because if I don't get it fixed before half, in the second half, they're going to come back and do the same thing. But if I get it fixed then they'll probably end up going to what you saw on film. What is their best plays? What is their best passes? What is their best runs? And that's really the stuff you worked on. So that's why I think third quarter is such a big quarter because I have to have done my job already in fixing it, or at halftime i got to do a great job of fixing it. First quarter, you just don't know. You know, uh, Hopefully you can put out the fires as quick as you can, but by halftime you got to make sure that you've got it stopped already or go inside calm people down and get those things stopped. So Lance, when, when, you, when you blitz, you obviously need corners you can trust that they have to be in man. Was that important when you studied all the corners you added in the portal? More recently, obviously, uh, the young man from Vanderbilt, uh, mm -hmm. the young man from Oklahoma, uh, the, the smaller college one you got. Was that a quality that you saw that you valued, their the ability to play man? Can you project that if you don't see a lot of it on tape? Uh, you know, everybody's got to be able to cover these days. So the days of having what they call the spin-down safety is gone. So you want a guy that can play in space. So especially when you're looking at corner, the first thing you look at is what kind of cover skills does he have? Can he play man-to-man? -man? Is he a good off guy? Is he a good press guy? And if there's a guy that's not playing the ball downfield very well, you've got to kind of like, okay, there's going to be a lot of – because most all the time you see the throws, they're going to go to the sideline on corners and they're going to go back shoulders or they're going to throw deep. Uh, so a guy that can't judge a ball is going to have problems playing corner today. So you try to do your due diligence by watching as many downfield throws as you can to see if they can defend the deep ball. So those two guys were really good players. Uh, they played multiple spots, but it's still it's a crapshoot. You really don't know until you know. Until and they Freeney, get into it. it's just judging someone off junior college today, is that a difficult skill to sort of judge off junior college college? No, junior college guys face really good players, you know. Uh, just depends why you're at that JUCO. Uh, did you go there because you didn't have grades, or did you go there because you didn't have the offers you wanted, and maybe you switch positions? Like Freeney was a high school quarterback, and uh, he went to JUCO and played corner, so he needed to get some film out there. Well, you know, he put out some really good films. So now they play some really good wide receivers in that league. So we was able to see enough to say hey, this is a kid that's really past a freshman year. Uh, you know, he's not a senior coming out of high school. He's a kid that's already got some experience in college, so we went on him. So we feel like he can make an impact and help. One last thing for me. Obviously, before you arrived, or around the same time, Miami lost their biggest defensive tackle in Daryl Jackson. There was another 300-pounder added, I guess, Dean and Gore, 280 yeah. range. Do you have enough, do you think, from a run-stuffing standpoint, a defensive tackle with Harrison Hunt and Dean and Gore, obviously LT, Mod Moten? It's always good to have like a really, really, really big sucker. You know, when you don't have them, uh, you don't have it. So you've got to create ways to make up for that. 
a lot, a lot of times it's through movement of your defensive line or different techniques you play. But uh, we feel like we have enough big guys. We just don't have a big, big anchor. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I think we've got a good front. I think we got a lot of depth. Uh, we've got some backers that can play. So I'm excited. I think the D-line is the strength uh, of the defense. Um, so we'll see how this thing goes. But if we say injury-free, I think we've got a good chance to be a good defense. Thanks so much. In terms of your rotation, um, D-line on down, D-line linebackers, cornerback safeties, how tight is it or how loose is it in terms of getting guys in and out of the game? Uh, you know, a lot depends on the tempo, how fast people go, um, how you can get guys in and out. You want to roll your defensive linemen in there more probably so than anybody. Uh, corners and safeties, you don't rotate them in a, in a series, even linebackers too much. But the D-line, you want to get them on and off the field on a dead ball to try to get some fresh lace because they're always battling inside. and They're bigger guys, so they get tired a little bit. But uh, you know, it just depends on how many good players you have, how many people you feel that can play when the game is on the line. You know, So uh, different defenses, different places I've been, the numbers have been different. So. We'll find out through camp how many guys we can really depend on and uh, how many guys we can play at each position. And you haven't you brought in some bigger corners, guys like Jadeus Richard and even Devon, Devontae Brown. But among those guys with more size and build, is there any potential cross training between cornerback and safety? Yeah, there is. Uh, we'll train some, not very many corners at safety. Uh, usually you train your corners at nickel and you train just you uh, train your safeties at nickel and if you have a guy that just plays the nickel or star you train him at another spot so you try to get as much depth as you can like that but very rarely does a corner go to safety but when that's really really smart you may have to use them to you know just get through a game or whatever but uh, yeah you have to train in in different spots for sure so obviously a tall task replacing two cornerbacks that were starters last year in the NFL draft. What is it exactly that you're looking for, the attributes, in terms of your two potential starters on the outside? Um, you got to be able to play the deep balls downfield. You know, you've got to, because there's a lot of back shoulder throws, and that's really, you know, you have to get guys down, but you have to limit the amount of big, the big plays that happen downfield. Uh, I always feel like you're going to give up some big plays, but as long as you get the guys down, and you start the series over, you got a chance. You can't let long throws go for touchdowns. Um, so really defending the outside is where the corners are going to make their money. You know, most of the time in the post, they have help, but on the outside, they're really by themselves. So just guys that can play the ball downfield, get their eyes back around, and uh, be in good phase with the wide receivers. And moving down to the defensive line, so you have some guys playing inside and outside. You kind of could list off the guys that are playing in and inside and out. Uh, you know, Bain would be a guy that plays outside, inside and out. Mesador can do it. Uh, you've got different guys that got different skill sets. Like Maybe, those, uh, a Leonard Taylor. Leonard Taylor's belongs inside. You know, he's an inside guy. Uh, needs to be left inside uh, to rush the passer as well. When you go outside, you really want a guy that can still run, but it's different for those offensive tackles taking on some bigger guys. You know, they bring a little bit more power than a, a normal defensive end does. It's a pass rusher. Uh, then when you move, move those guys inside, they're a little bit more athletic for the guards that they can handle. So Bain and Mesador are two different skill sets where they can rush outside and inside, and we'll use them that way. In terms of your linebackers, though, kind of a recruiting-related question, though. It seems to be like a certain body type and build that you guys are specifically looking for. What are, what are the attributes that you guys really want in the room? We're looking for some guys that aren't short. We're looking for some guys with length. Um, you know, their weight kind of fluctuates on who we're looking for. If, we, if there's a kid that we feel like can gain weight, then we'll sign him. But we want to stay away from as many short backers as you can because they just don't have as much room to grow. But if a guy's dynamic, we're going to take the best player. So if there's one that's six foot and, like, he's the best player on the board, we'll take him. But you really look for guys that are over 6'2 and above, maybe a little thin that you can gain weight, but they all got to be able to run and tackle. So the game hasn't changed. you got to be able to tackle the football. And now it's just a little bit more of a space game than it used to be. So it's not tackle to tackle. It's sideline to sideline. So my last one for you, let's flip it over to the off offensive side. What are some of the challenges that you've seen from Coach Dawson's offense, just dating back from the spring to now? I think Dawson understands how to attack uh, defenses, um, kind of sees what you're doing, and he has a game plan 
uh, of what would work against you. Of course, we don't game plan much against each other in the spring, but you could tell just through talking. He's very smart, seen a lot of football. Uh, of course, he's been with some really good offenses, so he understands it. And uh, he just knows how to get people in space and uh, get the, the right guys to football. I think that's what you'll see from Coach Dawson, is getting the ball in the hands of the playmakers and finding a way to run the football when we need to run the football. Thank you. I just want to ask also your philosophy on depth charts. <clears throat> Fall practice starts tomorrow. Do you just want like your ones and twos, like you try them for a week and then you mix it up based on how that goes, or how do you sort of do that sort of stuff? Uh, we, we got ones, twos, and threes, and uh, each day we'll grade the film. And whoever graded out the best and had a productive day, they'll go into starter the next day. Of course, Coach uh, Crystal Ball approves every depth chart change. So uh, just because we manipulate the practice, uh, depth chart doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen in the game. When we get to the game time, it'll be the guys who's had the best fall camp and who we really uh, trust and who's made plays. So, uh, yeah, it's fun moving the depth chart to see how guys react when they go down on the depth chart or a young guy get an opportunity to play up with the ones. Uh, you learn a lot about uh, them both ways. And uh, if a guy goes down on the depth chart and he pouts, then he's probably going to pout in the game. If he goes down and he fights to get you know, back on the number ones, that's a guy that's going to respond in the game. So you look at all those little things uh, that creates, you know, good team chemistry. I love you telling how it is. Uh, Bain is obviously a freshman. Uh, I know a lot of coaches don't like to trust freshmen until they sort of prove it in a game, that's just a practice. But, like, are there any other true freshmen that right now you can say, okay, they have a decent chance to be in the two deep, or, you know, aside from Bain, or, you know, is there anybody else you can even point to at this point? You know, that's a true freshman. You know, he, he came in the spring, so he has the upper hand. Right now, I'd probably say he's the only one right now, but we've got some talented uh, freshmen that have come in at uh, corner, you know, so I'm anxious to see Demore Brown, see what he does against the older guys. He's had a really good summer, and uh, I'm excited to see what he does throughout this camp because he's got the f physical gifts, and uh, we need him to step up and give us, probably give us some snaps. So. And I know co coaches hate depth chart questions, so just stop me if you don't want to answer it, no problem at all. But I did want to ask you um, a couple of the areas that fans want to sort of know who's battling where. So <clears throat> Branson Dean, would it be Jared Harrison Hunt that's the main competition for him right there? They all compete. Like, okay. nobody's with another one. They all kind of competing against each other. So, uh, you know, Dean, LT, Harrison Hunt, uh, all those Jake Lickenstein, Moten, all of them. I can't really tell. Yeah, you don't like, want to talk about all of them are just <laughs> like it's just it, a mix. So yeah, it's, open it's a mix. Yeah, yeah, it's open competition. So if it's LT and Dean, or it's just Dean and Harrison Hunt, then they're the starters. You know, so you don't put one guy against the other. It's kind of like defensive back. We want the best five DBs on the field. If it happens to be three corners. Uh, one safety in a, in a nickel, then that's who it's going to be. We'll figure out where to play them. So the more you can compete amongst your position groups, I think the better you are. Awesome. Yeah. I wanted to ask you just first impressions on some of your new DBs, like Jadis Richard. What, what do you like about him? Well, he's got length and he can run, uh, so he's got really good skill set with that. He's going to be a good blitzer. Um, we haven't gotten a chance to really work with him one-on-one. -on -one and go up against the offense. So this camp is going to be huge. He knows the defense because we installed it and they did some, you know, player-led practices. But uh, he's a big kid that runs really well. Uh, the Davis kid has been looking really good. Uh, he can disguise us a lot of things. He can play corner. He can play nickel. So I'm excited about both of those guys and just see how they pan out against the other ones. And uh, we'll definitely need their help to show up. And you have to